so long let's stand to our feet this evening we want to welcome you all into the house of the lord i want you to lift your voice and sing with some victory come oh victory in jesus my savior oh, I've heard about streets of gold beyond Christmas Eve by the angels singing some sweet day some sweet day I'll sing a prayer oh victory oh victory I don't say love you I say I was buried beneath my shame. Hey. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Yeah. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my turn 
till I met you. You call my name. Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know The old man knew Jesus when I met you Oh, the you called my name Oh, yes. Mm, here we go, church. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break out the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my
all the honor, everybody. Oh, Lord, we take this time right now. Lord, we lift our hearts to you. Oh, my God. wonderful presence of God we have experienced this week. God has spoken to us faithfully. We have been healed. We have been restored. There are people who have been physically touched, but I'm going to tell you something. God's not finished yet. God's not finished yet. God's going to move tonight. God's going to move in miraculous ways. There's going to be signs and wonders and miracles that God is going to do. There's people here tonight. You're still there's still one more thing that God wants to do in you. And what I want us to do this evening is I want us to contend, not just celebrate the wonderful week, but say, God, tonight you have something for me. Tonight I'm here to hear from you, God. I want to receive from you. You can do more in one service than you've done the whole week. And that's our expectation tonight. God, you're not finished until we say dismissed. 
you're going to do something right now in our lives. Let's believe God for that. We want to pray, uh, especially for Lily Moreno, eight-year-old girl from the church in Modesto, uh, started infusion therapy today, uh, which is going to help her with uh, her autoimmune uh, kidney disease. We need to pray for young Lily and believe God for a miracle. Let's pray as well for traveling grace uh, for everyone returning home tomorrow, that God's uh, hand would be upon us as we return to our homes. uh, And let's believe God tonight to do something in this service uh, with the remaining time that we have together. Amen. Let's stretch out our hearts to God. Uh, Pastor Gabriel Aguilar is going to open our service in prayer tonight. Father, we're so grateful for your presence. We thank you, Lord God, that you are saving the best for last, God. We are believing you tonight by faith, God. We are reaching out to you for miracles, Lord God, of healing, signs and wonders, God, miracles uh, in people's minds. Heavenly Father, yes, we wait on you for fire tonight, God. Uh, Lord, we humbly and desperately await, oh God, uh, a visitation tonight, an experience, uh, an encounter, oh God, this evening. Uh, pour out your spirit upon your church, uh, upon your people, God. Uh, Lord, every person, God, in this place, uh, let them feel and know, God, that you are with us this evening, Lord. Have your way, pave the way, Lord. We come against every lie. We bind Satan tonight. Uh, we bind fear and doubt uh, and resentment uh, and cynicism. Uh, we come against every lie. Uh, we come against every uh, wile of the devil uh, that come against your kingdom. Uh, Heavenly Father, we desperately uh, need a touch tonight. Uh, Lord, you wait for us in the nations. Uh, continue to use us, God. Let us use this place, God. Bless this launch pad, oh God, tonight. Uh, use us, Lord, to change uh, and alter the destiny uh, of this world, my God. Uh, we seek you and we need you uh, and we are nothing without out you, oh God. Touch this service tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated this evening. We're very grateful for all of those of you that are here. Many just came in tonight, just uh, from the local areas. We want to welcome you. and having a tremendous time. We do want to encourage you If you missed any of the seminars or any of the sermons, they have all been exceptional this week. And I would encourage you, they're all available on YouTube. They're all available through our app. Uh, There's no charges. Go and watch them whenever you want. Show them in your churches and let people be blessed by that. Amen. Let me just uh, uh, not just welcome you, but also those of you that are joining with us online for our Friday night of uh, conference. We're glad that you are participating with us. And we look forward to your participation through the entire service. Uh, including offering. Amen. And so we want to (laughs) not just welcome everyone, but we are grateful for all of you that have taken time this week, time off of work to travel, to be here. And then I know that you've been blessed this week and that God has uh, returned that to you a hundredfold. And we're believing God for more miracles, not just what God does here, but what God's going to do as you go home as you bring what God has done in you into your cities, uh, and we're believing God to hear reports of miracles uh, in your churches, explosions uh, of growth, uh, and and, man, God is uh, unstoppable. He is more into building his church than we are, and so we're going to believe him for great things uh, following this. We want to just let you know uh, the local congregation, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock service, Pastor Edward Safa, the leader of our churches in Sierra Leone and West Africa, will be ministering in our uh, Sunday morning service, 10 o'clock, and then Sunday evening, we have Pastor Aruna Bangura, who is uh, uh, pastoring in Marseille, France, just had the privilege of preaching for him uh, a couple weeks ago. What a great blessing we have to have him here ministering to us, the local body, and so I want to let you know about that. And then also just to remind you, if you stayed in a hotel, the extra room charges do belong to you please go to the front desk don't just leave go to the front desk make sure that if there are room charges uh, that you pay for those and I would encourage I always do this when I go to a hotel I ask them to print me out the receipt Uh, even if they say oh there's no room charges just print it out for me so I can have uh, evidence of that so because sometimes you know lots of rooms and things get mixed up but please take care of your extra room charges and uh, that'd be a great blessing We do want to take some time on this Friday night to just extend some gratitude to the local congregation uh, who has served so well this week. I am blown away. I I mean, you know, most years I'm blown away. But this year, uh, the amount of people 
who have just given their time, taken the week off of work. Uh, I mean, from golf cart. I mean, it's just exceptional, the servants that God has given us in this congregation. And we do it all for you so that you can have a wonderful week. And um, we, we can't name everybody, um, but I do want to name a couple of people that... Uh, that during this week have just been uh, exceptional. Uh, if you could just hold your applause, uh, j- you know, just for the sake of uh, uh, just time, et cetera. Can't name them all, but we do want to thank uh, Brother Paul Arbo and your ministry on the sound and live stream. Josh Unruh, uh, it makes sure that everything works. And so <laughs> uh, AC units and I mean everything. So we thank God for Josh in the middle of uh, uh, summer as well. Michael Hari, Natalie Williams did a tremendous job on the conference video last night. Uh, Rachel Vagoda, all of our administrative work that she does. Uh, what a blessing she is. She does the address book. She does exceptional work. We are, we're very blessed to have her and honored to have her on uh, staff as our secretary, and she does a tremendous job. Um, Anthony and Brittany Minor, our door directors who have uh, really facilitated so much this week. Um, Brother John and Vera, thank you for your work on the hotels and organizing us. And all week, we're trying to move things and arrange things, and he's always so quick. We really appreciate your service to the conference body as well. Uh, We want to thank what my wife calls the cleaning ninjas. This year, you guys have decided to vomit more than ever before. And I think you didn't listen to me on Monday. I told you to drink water. I told you to hydrate. But, man, these cleaning ninjas have been (laughs) running around with their cleanup stuff. Uh, Just after every service, they're here very late cleaning. Did a tremendous job. Every time I walked in the bathrooms, there's towels in there. The things cleaned up. I don't even know how they keep up with 2,000 people, but they managed to. And we're grateful for that. The nursery workers, the donut ladies that helped increase our waste, the parking lot crew. Uh, who, you know, driving us around on the carts. Aren't you glad you don't have to walk from the dirt? I mean, it's not, you know, it's not ideal. We'd like you to be closer, but it, it's better than nothing. And so, so many of those uh, 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 workers in the parking lot, ushers, the security team that has kept us safe this week, a lot of, you don't even see them, they're just there, but they're keeping an eye on things. The police officers that have been here uh, all week, the children's church workers, the setup crew, uh, the video crew, the presentations team, they're right behind those glass windows are uh, tables of uh, men and young men and women that are making sure that everything looks good out here uh, and on the live stream. And so we're grateful for all of them. The worship team, Pastor Alvin, uh, just exceptional as always, and just ushers in the presence of God. Pastor Neil and your family, we're so grateful for the morning seminars where you set the tone and we get to just worship and then listen to preaching. We appreciate your family's sacrifice to do that every morning as well. Uh, and Terry McDonald with the bookstore that is such a blessing to us and, and McAllen Church and everywhere else they travel, El Paso, uh, just his work in the ministry to make sure that we have the books that we need to, um, uh, to uh, be able to grow in the Lord. And so um, I also want to take some time to thank all the preachers this week, all the pastors who have labored in the word to give us the mind of God. Um, the, the young men have done an exceptional job this week. And it... thank, you for, thank you for stepping up. And I, I want to say to the elder statesmen who uh, have allowed us the opportunity to minister, um, you know, you, you all could have preached uh, circles around us. And, and, you know, but we thank you for giving us the opportunity to minister and to really uh, work in the word and the opportunity for young pastors to develop and grow with the pressure of a conference sermon. And so to those of you that that uh, maybe took a year off for us, we really appreciate uh, you doing that and allowing uh, these young men to have this opportunity. Uh, we want to thank all of you for your faithfulness to give this year, your faithfulness supporting the international church launches uh, and uh, paying for this conference. We really appreciate all that you've done in your sacrifices uh, and uh, we want to uh, just mention you know it's it's not just things happening here but uh, even in the giving portion uh, you know pastor uh, mark crumpler and his wife diane spent years in china 
and uh, they are, have been participating in this uh, 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 church, and, and Pastor Mark still continues to preach uh, and does Zoom messages for them, but they're holding the fort down there in China, Pastor Watson, and they collected an offering of $2,000 to give to the conference, uh, and they uh, just... Um, it, the, the church in Tanzania raised up an offering, sent $400 with a money gram, picture of a money gram thing. Pastor, pick this up and put it in the offering, you know. And so, I mean, people around the world have been rallying together, and we appreciate all of you uh, and your faithfulness to that. So let's give all of these a uh, warm hand and, and the gratitude and appreciation. Amen. Amen. This evening, we are going to hear some reports of what God is doing around the world, and they are going to uh, obey the clock. And when it turns red, that doesn't mean keep going. That's kind of like slow down, stop. Um, and so they each have three minutes, uh, and we're going to hear from Pastor Daniel Monreal, Anthony Garcia, Frank Romero, Herb Ruby, Freddy Gonzalez, and Juan Pablo Cardo. So let's come. Amen. Good evening. My name is Daniel Monreal, along with my wife, Sarai Monreal, and my two boys, Nehemiah and Isaiah, were pioneering the church in Marana, Arizona. Amen. We got sent out of the November 2021 conference, the Anomaly Conference. Amen. And uh, we hit the ground running. Amen. And, uh, God gave us uh, uh, people right off the bat. We found a building. Uh, uh, we started congregating. We, we were uh, oh, going to open the church. Uh, we opened the church, actually, uh, uh, August 28th, but two weeks before we opened the church, um, my wife was pregnant at the time and uh, uh, started having complications. Uh, two weeks before that, uh, she was admitted into the hospital, amen, and she spent two weeks there. So uh, right off the bat, uh, as Pastor Carnegie says, the devil, um, uh, you know, started, uh, uh, you know, just bringing opposition against us, amen, but we pushed forward, amen, with the help of my pastors, this congregation, uh, your prayers, we were able to open the church in time, we had Pastor Larry Beauregard uh, for a revival, we saw visitors, we saw souls saved, we saw healings happen, um, uh, right as uh, soon as my son was born, he was born at two pounds, 14 ounces, Spent six weeks in the NICU, but he's a healthy boy. He's nine months today. Amen. He's a little chunky uh, little guy. Amen. Nehemiah. Amen. And uh, it, when he was born, uh, I uh, took my family out. We spent a couple nights uh, uh, in a hotel. And in one of those uh, occasions, my son and I were in a jacuzzi. Amen. Hallelujah. In a jacuzzi, uh, relaxing. Uh, and this gentleman walks into the jacuzzi, and I start witnessing uh, to him. He tells me that he's there with his father. Uh, get to meet the father. Start witnessing to them. Uh, before I head up to the room, I pray for him. Um, I pray with him. Uh, uh, six months later, this past March, I'm sitting down uh, uh, at at a, ta at a table there at the church uh, and I'm praying and this gentleman walks in uh, and it's a gentleman they had prayed for six months uh, 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 earlier. I mean, he's like, you don't remember me? I'm like, uh, he's like, I'm Jesus. You prayed for me uh, at the jacuzzi uh, at the hotel that we were at. Amen. So God brought him in. He's locked in. Him and his family in the church uh, and I believe they're here tonight. Amen. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, God has been moving. Amen. Um, we have a good core. We're running about 25 to 30 people. Amen. Uh, on a Sunday Sunday morning, God's really helping us. They're tithing, uh, they're giving, uh, they're just generous people. We had a lady that got saved uh, prior to uh, Fred Gonzalez Jr. coming in and doing a revival with us, uh, radically saved, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. She's brought in um, six to seven people, amen, uh, along to that that had been added to the church. Uh, with that, we had revival. We had our first uh, children dedication on Mother's Day, amen. We got to dedicate uh, five precious children and their parents uh, to the Lord, amen. So we thank God uh, for that. Uh, real quick, uh, uh, it's red, so I'm going to start uh, slowing down here, uh, but uh, we have our first water baptism in a couple weeks, so pray for that. Uh, I just want to thank the Tucson congregation, uh, my pastor, Pastor Warner, Pastor Garrett, Pastor Smith. Uh, thank you for your sacrifice, your investment. Uh, we love you, and we're praying for you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anthony Garcia. My Beautiful wife, Lena and I, amen, took the church in downtown Riverside, California in 2016, and we've been having a phenomenal time. 
Amen. In October of 2021, the church uh, had its 20th anniversary banquet. Um, the previous pastors were in attendance. Uh, our mother church was in attendance. Our sister churches. We had a great celebration. But just five months after that, and so, uh, amen, the new owner wanted to go in a different direction with new tenants. And so we moved into the uh, Cesar Chavez Community Center. And as you know, on the holidays, it's closed. And so we had to work through that. We had our services uh, in the living room, in the backyard, in the front yard, in parks. Uh, and we just worked that through. But God, uh, amen, really caused ministries to flourish, amen, our, our, our youth, uh, our uh, street concerts, uh, um, uh, amen. Uh, people were just coming in. God, this, this was a time of increase, uh, increase in camaraderie and unity, increase in numbers. Uh, amen. God brought in 32 souls. Ten of those, amen, were from Peru. So God's bringing, uh, doing something very special, amen. Uh, we had to begin a Spanish Bible study. Uh, we had our first one, and it was a great turnout. And so we were just very excited for what God is doing, amen, in Riverside. And so we, uh, I believe we had, a, we, we had a miracle. We got a building. And so I believe it was directly connected to a large uh, offering to, mission, uh, to the missions that we gave. Uh, I said, God, we need a building. We, we give to missions. And, but this offering was uh, uh, larger than we've ever given. I believe it was this last conference that, God, we need a, a building. And so, amen, our previous building was 1,800 square feet connected to a liquor store. Our new building is 3,100 square feet, and it's a standalone building. And so, yes, amen. And so uh, there was a lot of remodel done, and I just uh, quickly want to thank uh, the, our mother church, amen, Ron Tucci, uh, Anna Tucci, Connor Tucci, uh, amen, uh, Tony Rodriguez, Bobby Flory, uh, Jose Escoto, um, Isaac Neveretti, amen, those uh, that came and helped us labor. And I want to thank our, our, the Riverside Congregation for your continual faithfulness over the years, not just for the remodel, but your generosity, your love, amen. We love being with you in Riverside. I want to thank my pastor, Eric Strutz and Brenda, amen, for your 27 years of investing in my life and my family, and uh, we love you. We thank you so much for your investment. I wanna thank my wife, amen, honey. I've known you for 41 years. We've been married for 26 years, and it gets sweeter and sweeter. I thank you for your, uh, your faithfulness, your wisdom, your strength, your smarts, amen, your, uh, amen, your discipline. Uh, thank you for uh, your care and your uh, support for me. And I want to thank, uh, amen, the Tucson congregation, Pastor Warner, uh, Sister Mona, amen. Uh, happy 50th anniversary. Thank you for your 50 years of ministry. Amen. All right, everybody, here we go. You guys know how this goes every year, right? <laughs> Me and my beautiful wife, Roxy, have been in the Autumn Nation now, uh, Sells, Arizona, for five years. I, I wrote all this down because I'm trying to keep calm without crying. All right? So if I make you cry, that's all right. I just witnessed to somebody right after work today, and I made them cry, so it doesn't really matter. You know, God has been moving in a tremendous way. Curses have been broken in cells. You got to understand what God does in this nation, okay? Broken people just like me. Just like me. I can't hold back them tears because I know who I am. I know what God has done in my life, and I know that God has restored me. He sent me to a place where people were broken just like me. You know... We, we've been going out and ministering, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a federal place, so, you know, the certain, you know, with the rules and everything with COVID, barely got lifted up in May, uh, they barely had a parade, went out to the parade, I wasn't able to do it because I had to go to do a funeral, but my guys were out there faithful, faithful, I had people saying that, you know what, man, uh, uh, they were talking about the parade afterwards, that they could feel the Spirit of God, you know? You know, they've been talking about love all this week. I hear everybody talk about love. You know how important that is. I tell my guys that I love them. I hope you guys hear me now because you know that when I tell you I love you, I mean it. You know, I mean it. God is good. God has been moving tremendously. Children have been getting saved. Uh, you know, uh, 
you know, numbers grow and, you know, and they come and go. But you know what? We have over 100 people listening online. I think we have anywhere between 35 to 45 people that come to the church. God has been moving in a tremendous way. I see children rising up, women rising up, teenagers. We get young men coming to the church, men's discipleship classes, all this. We have ministry for the ladies. Uh, you know, Glenda Fussell came out and did a class for the ladies. They were excited, excited. And I encourage you, you know, encourage you to come out and minister, see, invest into the kingdom of God. Amen. Because God is doing wonderful things in sales. Autumn Nation, I love you. I love each and every one of you. God is doing something wonderful. Before I close, I want to say happy Father's Day to Pastor Warner. When my father, when my father rejected me, that man called me, a, called me his son. And I want to wish you a happy Father's Day, Pastor, because I love you. I appreciate you, Sister Mona, Pastor Gary. I appreciate the Tucson congregation. Pastor Alvin, he calls me the preacher, man. I love you. Thank you very much. Herb Ruby and my uh, still youthful and vigorous wife of 42 years, I believe, um, are in Sacramento, California. Amen. We call it the Door Church Natomas, and we are, bring a good report from Northern California. God is still helping us there. We got there during the Hillary Clinton administration, but we're still there and we're moving. You know, um, for several years we were in a church building uh, in a place called Land Park, and it just, you know, finally we, we, we decided to move and we had to sell our church and we were able to do that. And we moved back to the side of town where we started, it's called Natomas, one of the, it's a great area of Sacramento, and God has already begun to bless us got some great outreaches, and I tell you, we got some good saints in Sacramento, man. They love God, they're faithful, they're committed, and they want to see revival in California. And, you know, um, we took over a building that needed a full, they call a full build-out. You know, I'd never heard that term, but, um, you know, it was a term I had to familiarize myself with. That simply means it needed a, it needed a lot of money, and so I was with my, uh, with my folks, and um, uh, we were looking at the building. I said, you know, it should cost around $50,000 to do this, don't you think? And so I had a contractor in the church there, and he's quiet, and he says, Pastor Ruby, this is going to be at least 150000 And I said, 100000 You really think it's going to be 75000 You know? <laughs> but uh, let me tell you, man, uh, God helped us. It cost about that much, and uh, I can thank some of the immigration policies in America for that. Uh, <laughs> But uh, listen, man, it was, it, was professionally, it was professionally done. The building is, there, if you've seen the building, it's nice. And one other thing, I could go on, but very quickly, one other thing we had a chance to do this year, we raised several thousand dollars to um, uh, minister in India with uh, evangelist Larry Beauregard. He has an open door there. We are among the Dalits. These are some of the poorest people in the world, in the city of Mumbai, and also in Hyderabad, and I was able to be part of that conference. It was such an honor for me to be there. They so received us, uh, and uh, there's an open door there, and our church got to be a part of that, and so I'd give, bring a, just a good report for all of that. We're looking forward to a good time in California. Uh, we so appreciate the Tucson church, man. I, I, words can't even explain uh, Pastor Warner, the staff here, all of you are so faithful, and every year we renew ourselves. I've been doing this for several years now, and I got to tell you, I'm more excited than ever about what God's going to do. God bless you, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We got some young people in our church. the word in 2016 says God's going to give you an army of young people and uh, I'll tell you what God is raising up an army amen um, 
My name is Fred Gonzalez, my beautiful wife, Michelle, we labor in, and, and, and uh, all my family, amen, we labor in the city of Puyallup, Washington, and uh, we're seeing God do some powerful things, amen. We are um, hungry for all that God has for us. In uh, July, um, we went to a uh, Prescott conference, uh, and uh, just, uh, there was a word that went forth, and uh, some of our youth were there, and the word was simply this, if you go to the corner, if you go to the corner, God will draw them in. Amen. So these, uh, they went to the corner. Amen. They began to just preach in the corner, holding signs. Amen. There was a, uh, a couple, a precious couple, amen, that was driving by. They were just fed up with life. Uh, I think that had been arguing with each other. Amen. And uh, she looks out the window and she says, I want to go to that church. They came out Sunday morning, got gloriously saved, got delivered from alcoholism. Amen. They're here tonight. Amen. With us in this conference. Amen. So... We also had a 17-year-old girl, amen, she was uh, uh, there uh, walking by, and uh, this was an, another separate time altogether, a 17-year-old pregnant uh, young girl, amen, she got saved, came into the church, uh, she just uh, gave birth, amen, uh, about a month and a half ago to baby Rose, amen, she's in our church as well, amen, so just very thankful for what God's doing there. Just last week before we came, we're out there again, amen, a family came in to the parking lot, they got saved, a, 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 a mom and her two children they showed up on sunday as well as two other visitors amen so god's really doing the work there in the streets our preachers are preaching amen they're uh, lifting up the name of jesus they're glorifying god we started a music scene uh, about a year and a half ago and it's been uh, just a time of fruitfulness we've taken our music scene to nine other churches in the northwest amen the whole the whole bunch of us amen we go over there and uh, just preach the gospel help uh, pioneer churches out as well uh, we have eight door preachers right now Amen. That are uh, preaching our door scenes uh, and just uh, seeing God do some powerful, powerful things uh, in us. And we're so grateful. Amen. For this church, Tucson, you are a beacon for us. You are a beacon for us. Amen. You are a light in a dark world. When we see the Tucson church and all that God's doing here, amen, we celebrate with you 50 years. Amen. That's part of our legacy as well. I thank God for my pastor. Amen. We love and appreciate you, Pastor Warner. Amen. Sister Mona. And again, this Tucson congregation, we're so grateful for all that God is doing. Continue to pray for us because we are having revival in Puyallup, Washington. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello, everybody. My name is Juan Pablo Cardo. I'm with my wife, Silvina. We are pastoring in Buenos Aires, Argentina. World champions. <laughs> for, the, for the last 23 years in, in Buenos Aires, God is doing uh, powerful things there. Uh, the last year we had our annual, uh, annual marriage retreat with 250 couples and evangelist Glenn Puglisi was there preaching. It was an outstanding time. God has opened doors in the nations around us. And the last uh, year here from Tucson, we were able in partnership with the Tucson congregation plan one man in Montevideo, Uruguay. Let me tell you something. In three months, he was, he was running 35 people. And the last revival with uh, evangelist Frank Escobar, they finished with 48 people amazing in just in six months what God is doing there plus our economy is not doing very well last year was 120 percent inflation uh, that really kill your purchasing power but even in the mix of that God is moving we were able to host a conference with 750 people launching seven new churches and give the money for the buildings uh, with a PA system chairs pay for the full conference God is in the move so inflation will not stop the kingdom so what is good is now in Argentina we, we have 56 churches in the country so God is moving in uh, our last rally with Pastor Greg Mitchell, uh, we host not only pastors from Argentina, from other uh, nations around, and we were 70 pastors there, you know, for this rally that was powerful with Pastor Greg. Amazing time. We had the visit of evangelist Jerry Fossil, Frank Escobar, Glenn Puglisi. They were a blessed for the nation. Uh, uh, one highlight, too, in the last eight months, we married Three, uh, three, uh, three couples, but all of them church kids. You know, so God is doing something in, in, in the congregation. 
uh, our national discipleship with Pastor Jose Luis Gagiola was uh, over 380 men. Amazing time too. And God has opened doors for us like uh, all the world is closing for Russia. God opened uh, doors for us to go to Russia to help uh, there too. God is moving in Russia, doing a tremendous and powerful work. Only one of our soldiers in the, in the river of Ukraine baptized uh, 65 soldiers. You know, getting his life to Jesus in Russia. So God is moving there too. I, I just want to say thank you to Pastor Warner for his leadership and support and vision uh, for Pastor Gary King and Tucson Congregation. They always are such a blessing for us and a Pastor Church too for the support. God bless you. You are very, very powerful tonight. We're here to receive the final offering of the Bible conference, and uh, this is for uh, paying off this conference. This is not last night's World Evangelism offering. If you uh, came uh, for that, then make sure that you mark that if that was for World Evangelism last night. But we have to uh, finish this conference and make sure that every need is met. Can you say amen? And so um, I appreciate Juan Pablo's humility, uh, not talking about Argentina winning the World Cup uh, this year. Uh, and, uh, and so we thank God for that. But uh, my offering uh, tonight has a, a soccer connection. And if you know anything about uh, soccer, uh, you probably know that I hate it. And um, uh, I, I do not like soccer. Uh, when England played America, Ma Marcus and I, my son, were driving back from uh, Tucson that day, and we actually listened to the game on the radio only because I was hoping that England would defeat America 10 to nothing and completely destroy all uh, hope of America ever winning and they would just give up on soccer here in the United States. Unfortunately, England being England didn't do that. But, um, <laughs> amen, you know. I, I, I've shared this illustration before uh, in, uh, in, actually in Holland, in the, in the conference in Europe there, and I could feel the vibe, and I told them that uh, my conviction is that the Antichrist loves soccer. And, um, and so, so, but that's a great way to set this up. In that spirit, though, a number of years ago, somebody brought to my attention a, a, a soccer player in England by the name of Sean Wright Phillips. And this man, a uh, young man, started out at Manchester City, and uh, he began to catch on. He was like their player of the year. Uh, his early years, this guy was marked for greatness. He was one of those special finds, you know, that you bring a guy in when he's young. After a couple years, he develops and he begins to emerge and you realize that you have something special. And what happens sometimes in the, in the Premier League, kind of like what happens in the NBA or in uh, 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 baseball, is that after their initial contract, all the rich teams notice them and take them, and that's what happened. Chelsea, which is a perennial power, a very rich team, said, we want this guy. And so they reached down and they said, we're going to bring you in. And they brought him in for five years. Uh, they had the money. Uh, they were able to, uh, I, I'm not exactly how it works there in the Premier League, but they took this young, upcoming guy that, that uh, the people of uh, 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 Manchester City, oh, this is our future. And they just simply reached down and plucked him like the Yankees do to the A's, it seems like, every year. And they brought this guy in. But what was interesting is that Chelsea already had a lot of great players. They already had a very powerful team. And in fact, he never played. They brought him in just to keep him from playing for another team. They sat him on the bench, and he sat there on the bench, uh, one of the best players in the nation, and he was there to sit on the bench like he was playing for UCLA back in the 1970s, just to keep him from playing for the other team. Now, think about that. Now, let's look at this scripture, Matthew 4, verse 8. Um, the Bible says, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, him being the Lord Jesus, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. 
Now, when you think about that scripture, the number one thing you have to think about is that Satan was not trying to turn Jesus into a follower. Satan was not trying to turn Jesus into a Satanist. He was not saying, put on skinny jeans and a black t-shirt uh, and talk like this. He was not asking him to listen to ACDC or anything like that. He was, what he was simply saying is, I will give you all of this if you will sit on the bench. You can have everything. I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. Now, we can debate whether that, uh, there was anything to that or he could have backed that up. But the truth was all he wanted Jesus to do. He, he didn't understand. The Bible says he didn't know what Jesus was going to do. The kings of the earth had no idea what was happening when they crucified Jesus. We, don't, we know he didn't know what Jesus was going to do, but he knew he was going to do something. And so we had a plan, and that plan was, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw you all the wealth of the world because when you get money, many people sit on the bench. They don't participate. They don't get on the pitch. They don't get on the field. They, they uh, just simply, uh, you know, just stay where they are. And, and so there's a truth here, and that truth is this. The devil doesn't always want to make you poor. Sometimes the devil wants to make you rich. That he knows that if he can put money in your hand, that that'll be a sufficient. That life will be over. You'll retire. You'll settle down. You won't be on the cutting edge. If something can happen and take place. I appreciate excellent preaching from Brother Colin this week. And he talked about how when you're young and pioneering, you have a hunger that after a while, once you have some stuff, you lose your hunger. This is this, this principle right here. You know, when Yolanda and I celebrated our 25th uh, wedding anniversary, we went to Maui. And you know, the thing about Maui that I didn't realize, it's a very Christian island. And there's a very Christian influence in that island. And, and uh, we were, I don't know what tour that we were on. And they told the story about a missionary by the name of Dwight Baldwin. He came to Maui, he was a medical doctor, and he is credited for bringing the gospel to Maui. And the, the story goes that there, there was a devastating plague that uh, went through the island. And this man is a medical doctor, and his prayer and his ministry is credited for saving these people from this plague. Um, and, and, and so they honor him and they mention his name, but then they went on to say this. That today, when people think of Dwight Baldwin, they don't think of the gospel. They don't think of salvation. They don't even think about his medical service. You know what they think about? That the Baldwin family is the richest uh, family on the island, and they are the greatest landowners in the island. Uh, because when they went there, uh, they began to buy up, island, uh, 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 buy up the island. They began to produce uh, pineapples and things like that. And today... They say of the Baldwin family, they came to do good, and they did really good. Because money can get you off the pitch. Because all the devil has to do is say, I will give you all this stuff if it will keep you from doing anything. Want a deeper example? In Charles Colson's book, uh, 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 a very powerful book, God in Government, he, he tells the story about when Hitler began to emerge in Germany, and he began to make an, a powerful impact, and uh, the, the, the biggest opposition to Hitler was the Christian church. Some of these Catholic priests, man, stood up to him. They were people like Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Martin de Moller, and many of you know those men who stood up, uh, and he understood that it was the Christian church that had the power to frustrate his plans and they began to talk to him and they, they began to uh, uh, you know, tell him we've got to do something about the church, we have to do something about these ministers. But listen to this quote, I, I gave it to him, they're gonna put it up. It said, in private, however, Hitler expressed his utter contempt for the church, particularly for the Protestants. He expected their pastors to knuckle under easily to his schemes for remolding the church, his main source of opposition, quote, they will betray anything for the sake of their miserable little jobs and incomes. I will throw 
the kingdoms of the world out at you if it'll keep you off the field. All I got to do is give you some money. All I got to do is put some money in your hand. So let's stop here and think about this for a minute. Are you going to be on the field this week? We're leaving tomorrow morning. Everybody's leaving here. We've had a tremendous conference. We've had great preaching, testimonies, all that's gone on. And I ask you tonight, have you really sacrificially given uh, or are you sitting on the bench during this Bible conference? Because you and I make a powerful difference when we give. That is one of the, the, the contributions to this conference is whether or not there has been powerful release of finances. And here we are, we can, we can sit here and we can and cheer and walk out of here and say, okay, honestly, what, what was accomplished in my life this week? And we, well, I heard some good sermons and I've got some notes, you know, and all that. Uh, but if you walk out of here with all that money, you stayed on the bench. If we do not give, we're not liberal. Because all it took was to give us some money. And we just sat there. Five years. You read about this man's life. He'd get on play every once in a while. And he'd actually do good. And then they would sit him down. He never broke through. He never. Five years. And it turned out to be the prime of his career. You know what ended up happening after five years? He returned back to Manchester City, his original team. And when he came back, the, the fans were happy. Oh, we finally got this guy back. He's going to now help us. We're going to be good. Um, and so the next season started, he had a bit of an injury and then began to get on the field. And you know what they noticed? He had lost a step. He wasn't the player that he once was. And they're watching him. They were paying him 110,000 pounds a week. And they realized this is not the same young man that left here he spent five years making money and doing nothing, and then the opportunity was gone. And so I, I imagine Sean Wright Phillips is pretty rich today. I hope he doesn't look for me because I'm telling his story. But I'll tell you something tonight. I wonder if Sean Wright Phillips wonders what could have happened. I wonder if, he, if he's haunted by the idea that I could have been one of the best in the world. That my name could have, maybe it would have been up there with a guy like Lionel Messi, you know. How good could I have been if I didn't allow money to just get me to sit on the sidelines? And so I'm asking you as we close this conference, are you going to sit on the bench or are you going to get in the game? Are you going to contribute and say, I want to be a part of this? I want to tell you, as somebody who hosts a conference, conferences are not meant for making money. The outpouring of, of, of finances that the Tucson Church is embracing from last night's offering, what happens to... Listen, this is not that at all. The reason why money is so important for a conference, because it represents your heart. It re represents how much of your heart is really in this. How much you're really saying, I want to be a player. I want to make a difference. Or am I just satisfied because I've got some money now just to sit back and just not participate? Maybe every once in a while, get in the game. You know, it's like those guys at the end of the soccer game that run out there for, you know, 30 seconds. Is that's all you want to do? Or do you want to contribute tonight? Let's bow our heads. The devil... You know what's so interesting about this story? The devil believed that, you know what, I can just throw possessions and wealth and material stuff, and somehow Jesus will not be who he could have been. And, of course, we know the Lord Jesus rejected it out of hand. But if you think that's the last time the devil's played that card and simply said, if I can just put money in people's hands... I can get them to back off. I'm asking you not to back off tonight. I'm asking you not to sit on the bench just because you've got some money. Father God, I ask you to help us tonight. We pray for a miracle offering. 
God, I thank you for these testimonies, the churches in Tanzania and China that have decided they are going to get on the pitch. I pray that you will bless and multiply this offering. God, let not one man or woman walk out of here not knowing, knowing that they have given their best. Knowing that they have given their best. And they said, God, I want to be a part of this and see your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Good evening, conference body. How you doing tonight? So um, I was just asked to share my testimony before we sang in the choir tonight. Uh, my name is Israel Ajala, proud son of Peter Ajala. And um, I've been in Tucson now for four years. Uh, I was born and raised in church. Um, but it wasn't until I was 16, the age of 16 years old, when I laid my life down to Jesus Christ. And it was actually the result of a revival with Pastor Alvin Smith of all people. He gave me a word directly from God, man. God knew where I was at, and he spoke to me, and I surrendered my life, and it's the best thing I've done. God has changed me. He's put me into a family of God. I have a spiritual inheritance. Just where God has placed me, it's just like, it's mind-blowing. Being a part of this conference of 50 years, um, I still haven't wrapped my mind around it. So be blessed by this song. It's actually amazing that this song uh, relates a lot to the theme of this conference in love. And this song actually ties right into that. And we started practicing this months ago. So it's all God. Enjoy. So we're going to give you some Hebrew words tonight. So they can run the screen. I want you to sing with us and rejoice in Jesus. Clap your hands. Woo! Here we go. He nema tobu manaim, shevet achim gam yachad. He nema tobu manaim, shevet achim gam yachad. He nema
Bless the Lord. That's it. Pastor Gary, you can come. God bless you. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you, Pastor Alvin, for your ministry. It's always a highlight of the conference to hear the choir. And I'm telling you, they work for months ahead of time on something like that. It's very complicated. And uh, we're so grateful for all of them uh, and their ministry to us this evening. Amen. Let's give them another hand. <laughs> Friday night of our conference every year for however long we've had them has always been reserved uh, for uh, Pastor Wayman Mitchell, our leader of our fellowship. And it's always been a special time because it's how God puts a the icing on the cake, the bow, and, and uh, over the last number of years, uh, as Pastor Mitchell passed away, uh, Pastor Greg has been charged by the Lord with the leadership of our fellowship, uh, over 3,000 churches around the world, and we are so blessed not just to have him as a leader, but to have him here tonight to minister the word of God to us, so let's welcome him as he comes this evening. Amen. Thank God. What a privilege it is to be a part of this great gathering. Pastor Warner, I congratulate you and Sister Mona on the wonderful work that God has done here. What a milestone, 50 years and all the impact. It is incredible what God has done, and I'm, I'm rejoicing with you in uh, seeing the work of God. So what a privilege that I get to be a part of this. Uh, God is doing wonderful things. In uh, our fellowship, you with the churches that you planted last night, just in the last five and a half months, we've planted 169 new churches throughout the fellowship. Amen. And more to come tonight. We are making impact. I, it is my, uh, I, my belief, if God can help us, in, uh, through the rest of the year that we will be planting a church a day in our fellowship. And that is another milestone that we're rejoicing because those are places where God is going to save people. Good that God allows us to be a part of it. Thank God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Joshua. Chapter 14, there is a man named Yuichu, uh, Yuichiro Miura. He first climbed Mount Everest at age 70. That was the first time. He climbed it again at age 75. And then he became the oldest person in the world to ever climb to the summit of Mount Everest at age 80. In an interview, Miora said, Mount Everest continuously calls to him. And that it is always on his mind. He says, Everest calls to me. Miura shows no sign of slowing down. Said he tries to plan, or he, he is planning on trying to reach the summit of Mount Everest again at age 90. In the text that we're going to read, I've chosen it on this great milestone conference. Because Caleb is at a milestone. It is 45 years after God had told them that they would possess the promised land. He delivered them from Egypt. He is at age 85. And he says, the mountain is calling me. Give me this mountain. And you and I on this final night. To the 50th anniversary conference of the wonderful work that God has done through Tucson and all of your associated churches, what needs to happen in us is once again, we have to make sure that we are facing the mountain. I want to preach about facing the mountain. We're going to read Joshua 14, 7 through 14. Caleb says, I was 40 years old. When Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land and brought back, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. 
Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly or completely followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day, 85 years old, and yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day uh, how the Anakim or the giants were there, how the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out. As the Lord said, and Joshua blessed him, it gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron became, therefore, the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel facing the mountain. I want to begin. Let's talk about facing God over time. Our text is a milestone. It is 45 years after he went in to spy out the land. He's looking back on 45 years of relationship with God. It is wonderful to look back and remember. And God wants us to remember the feasts of Israel, God had deliberately designed set times in which they were to look back and remember. The memorial stones in Joshua 4 and the Jordan River, in the middle of the river and on the bank uh, of the Jordan, they were to remember. We look back and remember so we can see if we're still on track. We look back and remember to see if we are still succeeding in our mission. And so here it is, a milestone, 45 years later, how do we determine whether or not we're a success? The first part of success is merely survival. You have to survive over time. Psalm 91.6 speaks about the destruction that wastes at noonday. Does, it's not at the beginning. On into life's journey, there are some people that destruction comes. The only thing I do not like about being saved a long time, I've been saved since 1978, the only part I don't like about it being a long time is the people who didn't survive the journey with us. That's the sad part of every milestone. I've been a part of many anniversaries in different churches and on my own churches in different times. The only part, you start gathering photos and you're looking there. Photoshop is the friend of every milestone because there are people, unfortunately, they have to be edited out because they are so destructive. Not only are they not here, but they're destructive to us. So Caleb is saying part of success is I am still here. That is a very valid thing. Right now I'm doing a, a Sunday school, a Memorial Stones, telling the history of the fellowship, gathering photos. And often I'm looking at photos. I'm asking people, what happened to them? So you have to survive over time. You have to survive circumstances. There is not one of them. When they began, when God first told them about the land flowing with milk and honey, I don't think there was a single one of them that thought that they would be wandering in the desert for 40 years. Life was, it turned out very different for many of them than they thought. And that is a part of life. Life has unpleasant circumstances that you have to process it and you have to survive. Why were there so many that were not there with them 45 years later? Because there were struggles with water and food and giants and walls and there were people that they couldn't process that. It's not supposed to be like this. I don't see any milk and honey. 
And they didn't survive. And then you have to survive people. Verse 8. My brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Over time, there will be people around you that will be involved in sin and violations and rebellion. They're going to want to infect you. They want you to join their sin, their rebellion, their nonsense. In the local church, there are people, they get saved. At some point, it's like I thought that Christians were supposed to have love. They discover that some people do not, they're not bound together. (laughs) They're filled with nastiness. And those are the people sometimes that we are with. Ministry, a couple that I, I sent out several years after I sent them out, I was just curious and I asked this young man, what's the biggest thing you've learned after several years of ministry? And he said, learning what people are really like. He's talking about, he didn't think ministry was supposed to be like that. So listen, 50 years is wonderful. Longevity is not enough. You have to keep your heart right. You know how the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, miracle number one, they survived the fire. That is wonderful. But miracle number two, when they came out, the Bible says there was no smell of smoke. I've known people, they have survived the fire through the years, but you get around them and say, bro, you stink. The fire has tainted you. Longevity is not enough. And our text says the problem, some people have changed over time. Verse 8, nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Some people are bitter. Over time, you get around them and they talk about violations and injustice and things that are not fair. Others are carnal. You get around them, they talk flesh. They talk money and movies and everything but God. Others, they are cold. Matthew 24, 12, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. There are people that they're still here, but they no longer love the things of God. They no longer love to worship. I still can't get my head around Christians who come to church and don't worship. I don't get that. People that no longer evangelize. People who are no longer thrilled by salvation. People getting saved or what you saw last night, church planting, it no longer thrills them because they have grown cold. The Russian writer Leo Tolstoy, his marriage was filled with conflict and bitterness. When they had been married 48 years, his wife begged him to read to her things he wrote in his diary about her 48 years previously when they were both madly in love. He began to read some of the things that he used to say about her and both of them wept bitterly because their love had grown cold. But in our text, in contrast to all that, we see the heart of Caleb. He is none of those things. Verse 9, so Moses swore on that day, surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because you have wholly or completely followed the Lord, my God. Holy, it means to fill completely. Here he is, 45 years later, he says, I am filled with God. I am still filled with God's will. Listen, is it still a thrill to you? The Almighty God has plans for your life. Are you still in love with the will of God? That is Caleb. He says, my heart did not melt. I'm not bitter. I'm not cold. I am still filled with God. Holy followed. Not partly God and a lot of bitterness. Not partly God and a ton of rebellion. Not partly the will of God and a lot of selfishness. Philippians 2, 20 and 21. I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. He's not talking about I have partly God obscured by every other love and interest in life. 
Colossians 4, 17, say to Archippus, take heed uh, to the ministry which you've received in the Lord that you may fulfill it. See, milestones. This conference is called Jesus People. It is not just nostalgia. It is where we take inventory. We remember, many of you can remember when you were young and on fire for Jesus Christ. We look back, not just look and, and laugh at old photos to feel a twinge of nostalgia. We line up with, do we still have that? Are we still filled with God? Are we, we still holy following the will of God? Jesus people, that is people filled with Jesus. Are you still filled with Jesus today? Are you still filled with love for the will of God? You know, we had in Prescott, and I, I'm, I'm sure this has happened to Pastor Warner as well, but we would have people that for various reasons, they would be gone sometimes for decades. And then they would come back and they would hear Pastor Mitchell and they would come up to him and they would marvel and they would say, Pastor Mitchell, you're still the same. You're still preaching the same. They thought that was incredible. Life has gone on, but you're still the same. That is exactly what has to happen. We gather here to remember you must face God over time. Let's talk secondly about facing God through a man. The Bible principle is God through a man. Usually, God doesn't just appear to you personally and reveal himself. Okay, I'm, I'm not saying that can't happen. You know, occasionally I've had people, the Lord appeared to me. Let's be honest, they're not people we would trust with our wallets, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. Usually... God comes through a man. You see, it was Moses who brought salvation to Caleb. Exodus 3.10, I will send you, that's Moses, to Pharaoh that you can bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Caleb was delivered from slavery, not by an angel, through a man. A man of God appeared one day and announced good news. This can happen through witnessing. I know it was Frank King and Pastor Warner witnessed and handed some flyers at a business where Frank King was working. He got the flyer. He is saved today because of Pastor Warner's witness. Paul Stevens, after Renee got saved, it was Pastor Warner who personally witnessed to Paul Stevens. Or that may come through preaching. Many of you have been saved through the years, through Pastor Warner, one of the other staff through the years. It is God through a man. God reveals his will through a man. God reveals his will as you are connected to a man. It was Moses who brought the good news of deliverance. It was Moses who led them. It was Moses who told them God's will. Verse 10, here is Caleb. He says, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses. That is the Bible principle of God through a man. That is actually a foundational principle of our entire fellowship. Whenever there are people who accept that principle of God through a man, there is blessing and growth. That is what I'm looking at in this building. And no doubt there are many, many congregations watching online right now. Wherever people accept it, God's will comes through a man. That releases incredible blessing. Pastor Harold and Mona Warner, they came here. And Pastor Warner did what his pastor taught him. It wasn't an angel that told Pastor Warner what to do. It was a man of God. And when he received that and reproduced it, now we see what God has done in Tucson and the associated churches. On the other hand, wherever there are people that reject that principle, I, I just think that's, I don't, 
I, I just like to hear from the Lord myself. There are people not here tonight because they've rejected God through a man. There are people not here tonight because they had a better idea. That's, that's always the problem. There are people like, you know, Pastor Warner, you're good, but I got a better idea. Never mind that he's the one that got you saved. You have anything because of his ministry or whoever your pastor is. Now you got a better idea. Yeah, God through a man, that's okay. But now I want God through me personally. And wherever that happens, there comes destruction. It's been 45 years since he first went in the land. Think about this. Caleb is 85 years old and he is still referencing Pastor Moses. Four times in our text, he refers to Moses, who was his pastor. I listened to Pastor Warner's. I was in Guam, but I listened to his uh, uh, Monday night sermon. And here it is, 50 years later, I heard Pastor Warner still referencing his pastor because he believes in the principle of God through a man. Caleb demonstrates the power of discipleship. You know what Caleb had done? He caught a spirit from his pastor. It wasn't just... Moses, can you write down a few techniques for me? He caught a spirit. Think about this. He saw Moses and his brother showed up, face down the most powerful military ruler in all the world at that time, just two of them. <laughs> what a man. Caleb, no doubt, when he, uh, he probably was a boy when he heard this. He's like, this guy's crazy. And I like him. Stood, let my people go. No. Don't make me bring out the stick. <laughs> he caught a spirit from him that he wanted. He saw a spirit of courage, a spirit of commitment, a spirit of obedience and risk. Because that is the essence of discipleship. It is an impartation of spirit. 1 Thessalonians 2.8, so affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because you had become dear to us. See, discipleship is spiritual reproduction. Caleb said, give me the mountain. You know what I'm going to do? I saw my pastor face down Pharaoh and the powers of hell. There's giants in there. I'm going to go do what my pastor Moses would do if he was here. That is what discipleship is all about. That is what happened in Tucson. Pastor Warner came. He has succeeded in re reproducing the spirit of his pastor and passing it on to other people. See, our fellowship is unique. We are talking about Jesus people. We were not the only church. Prescott was not the only church that had hippies coming and getting saved all across America. But what is unique about us is that a move of God became a movement. And that is because of the local church and discipleship. Pastor Mitchell made disciples. He poured his spirit into men. Jesus people live on. The Jesus people movement is not dead. The move of God still lives on because of discipleship. So here we are at 50 years. We're looking back. We want to know. You have to survive over time. That's the first part of success. Hopefully still filled with God. But the second part, at milestones, we have a very simple reference point of success. Do you have any disciples? Pastors, I'm asking you that. Do you have any disciples? I'm not asking, do you have a crowd? Don't tell me your numbers. I'm not asking, do you have talent? Don't tell me what you can do. I'm not asking, do people invite you to speak? Do you have people that call you pastor? Or even do you have more than others? Do you have any disciples? And let's be honest, in the Gospels, 
Disciples has a very clear definition. It's not just a gathering of guys at the church. Disciples are to be sent. From the beginning, when Jesus chose these men to be disciples, he called them apostles, sent ones. He sent them. This is what we're looking at 50 years later. Do we have disciples? Are we reproducing? If Pastor Warner is your direct pastor, do you have his spirit? Or whoever your pastor is now on down the line, do, have you caught their spirit? Are you making disciples? And are you sending them out? Because this is facing God through a man. Let's look at one final thought. I want to talk about facing God's remaining task. The most important part of milestones is not actually what has God done. The most important part of milestones is the task that still remains. Because there was still land to be conquered. Joshua 13, 1. Now Joshua was old and advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, you are old, advanced in years. And there remains very much land yet to be possessed. I thank God for everything that God has done in Tucson through the Tucson congregation and all of the associated churches. It is wonderful and I congratulate all of you that are involved in that. But listen, I'm giving you the word from Joshua 13, 1. There remains yet very much land to be possessed. Oh, thank God for everything that he has done. But the real issue is what is left to do. I tell you, there are still cities in the United States that need Jesus. I was looking on the map two days ago at where we do not have churches. Cleveland, Ohio. Toledo, Ohio, Lexington, Kentucky, Montgomery, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi, Trenton, New Jersey, White Plains, New York. Are there no workers to go to those cities? Thank God for all of us that are here in our churches, but there remains yet much land to be possessed. There are still nations. Thank God we are in 139 nations, I think, right now. And yet there are still nations we do not even have a single church. Bosnia, Herzegovina, 3.3 million people, not one church. Central African Republic, 5 million people, not one fellowship church. Eritrea, 3.6 million people without a single fellowship church. The nation of Egypt has 105 million people. Is there not one worker whose heart is stirred for the nation of Egypt? Latvia has 1.9 million. Mauritania, 4.8 million. And those are just a few. I am reminding you at the 50th anniversary, there remains yet much land to be possessed. <laughs> Amen. But I believe that we are going to reach all of those cities and more besides. All of those nations and more besides. If we have the spirit that we had at the beginning, we are going to reach the land that is yet to be possessed. The 50th anniversary, I remind you, there were still enemies to defeat. Verse 12, now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. If you've heard in that day how the Anakim were there, that the cities were great and fortified, it may be that the Lord may be with me and I'll be able to drive them out as the Lord said. He said, look, there, there are giants that are holding these people bound. They have got to fall. They've got to be defeated. Listen, there are demon powers that still hold people hostage. Drug addiction is destroying America. I look at this, witchcraft has people bound. There are people still bound by a false religion that has no hope. 
There are enemies that must be defeated if we're to do the work of God. There is still a job to do. We look back to make sure that we are still lining up. But we look ahead to see where we need to be. This is God's call. You see, for those who keep their hearts right over time, for those who stay connected to a man of God, and those who stay committed to the unfinished task, in our text, there is the promise of supernatural blessing. Verse 13, and Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. When he says, I see the, mount, the mountain is calling me. Give me the mountain. There, there are demons there. They must fall. Joshua blessed him. This is not a light thing. I passed it in South Africa. Religious people. How are you? I'm blessed. That's nice words. That's, don't, I don't think that's what being blessed means. Blessing is a supernatural dimension. It is a supernatural dimension that enables you to overcome opposition. Judges 120, they gave Hebron to Caleb as Moses had said. Then he expelled from there the three sons of Anak or the giants. Listen, being blessed means that there is a supernatural power that will help you. What is the supernatural power you're facing? Some of you, I understand there's more witchcraft per square inch where you live than anywhere in the world. But blessing can change that. Some of you, I understand it's more expensive than anywhere else in the universe. I get that. Blessing can change that. I'm talking about a supernatural miracle dimension you can overcome opposition. It is a supernatural dimension that brings you into your inheritance. Think about Caleb. He's 45 years. He survived the wilderness. He survived five years of fighting in the land. Think about how God had protected them from assaults. Again and again, they would face enemies, and God protected them. That is what blessing can do. You can be protected. I don't care what people are dreaming up. I don't care what demons are planning. There's blessing that can protect you from assaults. The blessing of God can help you overcome mistakes. Caleb had gone through their failures as a people at Ai and Gibeon. And yet God was still able to bring him through. Isn't that's good? Is there anybody here you've ever made a mistake? Anybody? Or is that only a Prescott thing? Thank God. You know what? God has to help us survive ourselves. But people who are blessed, God will do that. And the blessing will give you guidance to bring you where you need to be. Joshua 14, 2. Their inheritance was by lot, as the Lord had commanded by the hand of Moses for the nine tribes and the half tribe. Think about this. This is such an interesting term, by lot. Scholars will say this could have been kind of like rolling dice, or maybe it was choosing the short stick, or various versions, whatever it was, God had planned for Caleb. He was of the tribe of Judah. This was where God planned for him to be. I want to tell you, if you keep your heart right over time and stay connected to God's man, if you keep the spirit and stay on task, God can guide you exactly where you need to be. I've pioneered twice. Lisa and I have pioneered twice. I don't, I don't have time. I'm not even going to tell you. But in both instances, God, we wound up exactly where we needed to be. Not no, I had no aware. I don't, no angel was telling me. But then we're led as like, this was God. That has to do with the blessing in a supernatural dimension. I close with this. I don't know if you saw this in the news. Gelge Sherpa is a 30-year-old 30 30 guide for, on Mount Everest. 
He was climbing Mount Everest with a client. On the way up to the summit, he found a Malaysian man who was in trouble physically. He was trying to come down from the mountain. They were in the area called the death zone. This means the zone above 26,000 feet. This year alone, at least 12 people have already died in this area. Five of them are still missing somewhere on the mountain. So Gail just said, I saw someone in danger, a man who needed rescuing and no one else was helping. I made the decision to bring him down to safety before he died up there alone. He had a client, someone who was paying him to take him up after convincing his client that saving the man's life was more important than reaching the summit. Gielgi wrapped the man in a sleeping mat and began the near impossible feat of getting him down to base camp. That is him. There's a human being wrapped up there on his back. He got him down several thousand feet over the next six hours, and then another Sherpa joined in. Gielger said, we dragged him on the snow, or we carried him in turns on our backs down to Camp 3. After the man was safely rescued and flown to a hospital, this is what he said. Sherpas are so committed and dedicated to their clients, they will never leave you behind. I experienced it this year. When descending from the summit, I had difficulty. Gail J. organized the rescue team. They brought me down for helicopter pickup and flight to hospital. Listen to this. I am alive today because I had the best dedicated partners. Gail J. kept his focus on what is important. He knew that life isn't about what you achieve it's about who you're able to save. What do you think Gielgi is going to tell his grandchildren in years to come? Is he going to tell them, you know how much money I made on Everest? I don't know. He's going to tell them, did I ever tell you the time that I carried a man down the mountain? Listen to me, on the 50th anniversary, you know what I'm seeing as I'm looking out over this crowd? I'm seeing people who are saved. I don't know whether it was Pastor Warner whether it's your pastor, or the one who witnessed to you, followed up on you. Listen, can I remind you again what we're doing? I quoted numbers in the beginning. The, the numbers are not, it, it's not a, you know, a stroke on the wall. The reason why that means so much to me is right now, before tonight's announcements, we have 3,465 churches who all hopefully will understand life is not about what you achieve. It's about who you're able to save. And we are going to send and send and send. Yes, amen. And in every place we send, we're going to preach Jesus who saves. And when they get saved, we're going to disciple them and we're going to send them so that they can save others. That is the strength of our fellowship that I remind you of at the 50-year mark. What needs to happen, we have to re-up. This year, I, I had something very powerful. Or actually, I think it was last year. Norfolk, Virginia. Pastor Carlos Morales got me on a Navy ship doing a tour. And on the ship, he said they are having a re-up ceremony. So what is that? We're on the bridge. Here's a lady, she's a female sailor who had already done, I don't remember how, 10 years or something. She is there and she brought her uncle who used to be on that very ship. He was the one who was going to read her the oath as she decided to re-up again. Her son was there. It was very moving. They presented the son with an award because they said, we realize you are the one who sacrifices. But what she said is, I'm in again. That's what I'm reminding you of. At the 50-year mark, we've, we've laughed, we've looked at photos. But are you in? Again. 
hopefully with the spirit you had at the beginning. We're going to survive over time. We're going to receive God through a man. And we're going to commit ourselves to the task that remains. How many of you say amen to that? Thank God. Let's praise the Lord together right now. God, we worship you. Oh, God. Thank you for the privilege of being able to do your will. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's bow our heads. Now with our heads bowed, in just a moment, we're going to move on to other things. Exciting announcements of God's works. But there may be people here tonight, this is all about salvation. We're talking about the issue of sin and dealing with your sin problem. The only hope you have is that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sin. You can go free if you believe on Jesus Christ. I'm preaching Jesus and him crucified. And I'm asking right now, how many of you here, you are not right with God? As God would deal with you, you say, tonight, what a, what a great night on the final night of the 50th anniversary. It would be, I want to get right with God. I want to deal with my sin problem. How many here, you're not saved? You're not born again, not right with God. As God would deal with you, you say, Pastor Greg, I want to get right with God. Lift up your hand. How many would it be? I need Jesus. I know that I'm not saved. God would not be pleased with the way I'm living right now. But I want to turn from my sin. How many here, lift up your hand all across this place. Or maybe you're backslidden. In the past, you were saved. Maybe this week has reminded you of what you've lost. Backslider, why don't you come home tonight? Get right with God. Lift up your hand. Say, that's me. I need Jesus. I want to get right with God. I want to turn from my sin. All across this place as God would deal with people. Thank God. There's a hand back there. God bless you. Thank you. How many others you joined this one? Unsaved. You've never done this before. Or you were saved in the past. You turned your back on God. Backslider, lift up your hand. God would deal with you. Anybody else? Quickly. Anybody else? Lift your hand up high so I can see it. Because God wants to help you. Back there, you lifted your hand. If you lifted your hand, I want you to stand up to your feet. I want to have someone pray with you. Back there, there was a hand there. Stand up right now. We're going to have someone pray with you. I'm going to ask God to help you. Thank God. If they lifted their hand, get someone to come. Help them to pray. I'm, I'm giving a challenge. In just a moment, I'm going to turn to Pastor Warner. He's going to give us exciting announcements of the continuation of our vision. The 50th anniversary, every person, you're going to have to make the decision to re-up. You have to make up your decision. I, I was moved. I, I was watching that ceremony. There was someone who decided this is important. I want to give my life to it. And they're saying, after years of being in the Navy, we're saying, I'm in again. And I've given you a challenge. You're going to have to survive over time. I spoke about bitterness, carnality, coldness. You're going to have to survive people and circumstances. I've given you a challenge. You have to accept God's plan that comes through a man. And then I've told you about the task that still remains. On the final night of this conference, I am asking, first of all, those in this building, whatever it was that God spoke to you about, some of you, it, you need to repent. Others of you, you realize you have moved away from God's plan of discipleship or God through a man. And others, you have lost focus on the task, but tonight God has reminded you what a what a great night to re-up and say, God, I am all in, all over again. I want to still be Jesus, people. If that's you, I want you to stand up to your feet. Just stay where you're at. I want you to stand up. By standing up, whatever God's dealing with you about, you're saying, I'm, I'm in, and I'm going to be a part of God's will. For some of you, that it means there are some things you have to deal with in repentance for others of you, you're going to have to commit yourself to your relationship with a pastor. You have to deal with your pride and rebellion. Others of you, you have to pour your life into young couples, raise them up. Others, you're going to have to focus 
your finances on the will of God, whatever it might be. I want you to lift up your hands. And I want you to say this out loud. Say, Father God, I thank you for the work that you have done in saving me and allowing me to be a part of your great plan of salvation in the earth. I make up my mind. I am committed to your will. Forgive me of anything that takes me from your will. I repent. Give me a passion and a love for the things of God and the will of God. Help me to fall in love with you all over again. And I commit myself. I make myself available. What you want to do in my city, in my church, in the earth, I'm all in. I surrender. Use my life in the last great harvest on planet earth. And I thank you in advance. For what you're going to do. In Jesus name. Let's praise God together right now. Father God we are so grateful. God we thank you and we praise you Lord God. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb of God, hallelujah. God, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise God for his goodness. There remains much land to be possessed. Thank God you can be seated. Pastor Warner is going to come and give us some exciting announcements. Let's give God a hand as he comes. Great. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Hallelujah. Thank God for that word. Uh, That's more than just a sermon. That is a prophetic charge. And I hear it, and I trust that you hear it as well, and so it is a great blessing to come uh, once again to Friday night of our Bible conference, and yes, people have made reference because it is uh, worthy, but of our 50th anniversary aspect, but it is, these announcements are in the spirit of what we just heard looking ahead to the mountains that are before us, that God is uh, calling us to uh, possess by His Spirit. And so we want to make a number of announcements tonight uh, about all that God is doing in our uh, fellowship of churches Uh, We want to begin by having these couples that were announced last night uh, come to the platform. And as you know, some are not physically present, and so it'll have to be by picture alone. Uh, But out of the Tucson congregation going into Huelva, Spain, Joaquin and Rosie Orozco... They are not here, but out of the Tucson congregation in partnership with the Rother Heights South London congregation going into Thamesmead, London, England, Peter and Jennifer Dorr. And then out of Almeria, Spain, uh, into Atavalo, Ecuador, Rodrigo and Maria Kilumbaki. Hallelujah, their pictures. And then 
out of the Cotonou Benin Church in partnership with uh, our congregation locally into Lome, Togo, Steve and Edith Mapaku Zola. Taking over that leadership church in Benin, Clement and Octavia Tanasso that are here with us tonight. Hallelujah. And then uh, taking over the church that Clement has pastored in Calave, Benin, uh, out of that church, Abel and uh, Rakdath uh, Abba Wanu, and we thank God for them. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to meet some of all these people in heaven, folks. And then out of the Albuquerque, New Mexico church, uh, pastored by Chayo Perez in the Panama City West, Panama, Aaron and Deanna Salazar. Out of the Tucson congregation, and uh, he told me this, so I'm just going to repeat it, in partnership with the Atlanta Metro congregation uh, into Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, Israel, and Deborah Habtamu. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all of these are announced last night. We do want to announce a number of new evangelists who can just simply stand and then uh, we'll recognize all of them in just a moment. Out of the McAllen, Texas church, evangelizing Albert and Narcedelia Berkeley. And these people, like I said, can just stand out of Atlanta Metro Congregation, Eric and Francis Stevens. Amen. Hallelujah, brother. Way back, way back. Out of the Cape Cod uh, Hyannis uh, Church, Hyannis Cape Cod, Ken and Marianne Whalen. And uh, two evangelists out of the Rother Heights South London Church, Leighton and Jennifer Ainsworth, and Nathan and Rosa James. We thank God for these. Uh, and some will be seeing in the days and years ahead, the Lord willing. A number of redirection announcements before we uh, proceed, and some are here, some simply need to be uh, announced, they're photographed. Others, if you are here, you can stand. Uh, but returning to the Mother Church in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, is Anthony and Cecilia Mabula. And returning to serve with excellence as he, they always have into the Tucson congregation, Thomas and Eve Williams. And They'd be here anyhow in a couple of weeks because there's a wedding coming uh, that involves them. We also want to recognize this occurred midstream in February, but back into the Kearns Utah Church was uh, Markel and Brandy Taylor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then we have a number of uh, changes on the international front in many of these uh, international countries. Uh, some of you have already picked up. It wasn't, uh, uh, it was very obvious, but back into the Tucson congregation because the nation of Colombia changed 
their religious visa issues uh, and uh, as a result, Corey and Sarah Galindis were caught in the middle of that vice that's going to be worked out, but uh, you can only go out of the country and return once. They've done that. You can't do it again. So they are returning back here to the local congregation, Corey and Sarah Galindis. When you're dealing with governments, you just never know. Uh, but also glad to announce that taking over that church in Los Patios out of the Cucata congregation pastored by Herman and Dora Gostellum is Pedro and Maria Escalona. Oh. Son jóvenes, hallelujah. Uh, returning into the Douala Cameroon Church for redirection is uh, Stefan and Najed Donfak, and taking over the church in Edia, Cameroon, is Benjamin and Shona Jengu. And uh, returning to the Dar es Salaam Tanzania Church, Benjamin and Ruheni uh, Krade, and taking over the Goba Church in Dar es Salaam, Edmund and uh, Bernadetta Stephen. And we're glad for them. Sometimes it's hard to get pictures at the last minute, but we want to announce a number of new uh, domestic church plants. Uh, this is actually the first church plant out of the San Diego congregation pastored by Julio Yvette Blanco going into Paradise Hills, California, Michael and Yvonne McBride. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And if you're going to be announced at conference, don't sit in the back row. And, uh, <laughs> although it's it, a longer victory march. Hallelujah. And. Uh, Out of the Athens, Georgia congregation, going into Tampa, Florida, Alvin and Lupita Franklin. <laughs> Hallelujah. God. Then out of the Colton, California church, uh, this has taken place just recently, but great opportunity to officialize and pray into Rialto, California, Ray and Sally Juarez. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. This happens to be little Sally that I knew as a tiny baby, too. And so, uh, God is good. Also, uh, out of uh, the Colton, California church, taking over the work in Upland, California, Jason and Olivia Duran. <laughs> All of these people, Jason was a baby too. <laughs> that says something about, not about me, but about him. And, 
and, uh, and uh, going out of the Tucson congregation into Indianapolis, Indiana, Anthony and Brittany Miner. <laughs> So he's only been bugging me for three months. Every time he comes into the office, he's talking about another city and uh, what do you think about this and what do you think about that? I, I think I just want what God wants. And uh, we're going to pray for these tonight, uh, Pastor Richard Ruby and uh, actually all of our uh, conference center pastors are going to come along with him and we're going to pray for these couples and then also following that for the church staff we appreciate all of you year after year who stay with us these are important times uh, uh, where these couples need uh, God's impartation, that grace. And so uh, pray with us uh, as we uh, lay hands upon these. Uh, then we'll also pray for uh, the couples pictured at the end after we pray for the couples on the screen uh, tonight. So you're ready, you're in charge. Father God, we just thank you for the open door. God, we ask for your holy anointing and favor and blessing. God, we pray the inheritance, God, of this fellowship uh, that you have risen up. God, will be my brother's portion. Uh, God, give him boldness and authority and dominion and wisdom and favor. God, I pray, God, let them be filled with a confidence. Uh, let him hear a voice behind him saying, this is the way walking in it. Uh, God, we release supernatural blessing and power. What a blessing to be sent out of this conference with everything that you have heard this week, the powerful, powerful inheritance that is yours. You know what inheritance, brother? It's confidence. Not pride, not arrogance, but confidence. Uh, you know exactly what God wants you to do. And when you get to where you're going, you're going to feel a confidence. You're going to know that God's with you. You're going to experience boldness when it comes to praying for the sick. You're going to have boldness. You're going to have insight into spiritual realities. You're going to meet people, and God's going to show you something spiritual about them. And you're going to pray with them in the first meeting for deliverance. There's going to be an authority that you sense, a wind at your back, uh, and it's because of an inheritance, 50 years, uh, and God is going to put that in you in your ministry. Father, seal this work right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Father, touch my brother and sister, Lord. I pray the hand of grace and power and anointing to prevail over their lives, O oh God. For ye, the Lord would say, My son, I have given you a heart of courage, saith the Lord. For ye, I have imparted the spirit of your pastor into your heart, and you shall go forth with a great anointing, and you shall feel a newfound confidence. I will remove the fear and the insecurity that Satan has sought to sow into your life to cause you fearful to venture and to go. For yea, I will give you courage, saith the Lord, to be the pioneer that I've called you to be. And know this, that where you are going, saith the Lord, I have prepared people. 
je vous ai préparé. There are numerous people Il y a plein de gens that I have prepared already. For I have been at work in this region for years, saith the Lord. And you will find those people in the day-to-day -day business of life as you go out and witness, share your faith, seek to meet people. You're going to meet the ones whom I have already prepared for you, saith God. Only find yourself in prayer, saith the Lord. And I will guide you for the word of the Lord says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord, and I have ordered your steps, saith God. Walk ye in them, saith the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray, church. We thank you, Lord, for Joaquin and Rosie, God, their lives. We thank you for years of faithfulness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you have placed in his heart. Lord, a spirit, God, of evangelism. Let the fire of God burn afresh and anew, God. I pray you open the eyes of his understanding. You give him wisdom, God, and insight, God, that the words of his mouth, God, may fall into soil that is rich, that shall bring forth fruit, God, that shall remain. For your glory, God, Lord, right now, Lord, we commit them under the shadow of the Almighty. In Jesus' name, God has poured in your life again and again and again. And God told me to tell you this. He wants you to spend your time pouring that into others. Disciples. God is going to give you disciples. And God wants that to be the driving force in your spirit. He wants you to pray for that daily. God, give me young men. Give me disciples. And God, God has them sitting, waiting for you. And as you just begin to step out and say, I'm, I'm going to spend my time pouring myself into others. God's going to pour more and more into you and give you grace and favor. And he's going to give you anointing that's going to break the yoke. And you're going to see the kind of revival that you prayed for and that we're praying for. Father, we thank you for their lives. We commit them unto you in Jesus' name. For the Lord would say unto my son and my daughter, because you have had a willing heart, and you have said, God, I am willing to go again. You have been willing to uproot yourself for my plan and my purpose. I see not simply the outward circumstances. I see the willingness of your heart. And there must first be a willing heart uh, for all the other blessings that I have to be poured out upon you. Guard your heart. Walk in the joy of that, uh, Lord, uh, and my joy shall be your strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that the Spain, historically, is one of the greatest nations in the history of the world. Uh, look at how many people speak Spanish in the world. So what I want, I feel a, a word just to tell you, saturate yourself in that culture. People go into these cultures, especially people that have a similar background. You know, like we, we speak Spanish, you have a Spanish speaking. You say, oh, they don't do it like us. The food is not, you know. Saturate yourself in the culture, the language, everything you can about the, and the people because there's a connection. And as you do that, Joaquin, you're going to find a love. Something's going to open up in your spirit. You're going to find a compassion and a grace. And not, you know, not allowing the, all the, the, the struggles and the competitions of different cultures. But God, here's, I'm here, and so I'm going to tap into that. This is who we are. This is what we're going to do. We're going to love these people. We're going to love this nation. We're going we're gonna to love this culture. And God is going to do an amazing thing through your, through your ministry. Hallelujah. Jesus.
Father, in Jesus' name, God, we pray for them. Yea, Lord, we commend them to your holy charge. Father, we release them into your purposes and your destiny. For you have brought these in and saved them, O God, redeeming them unto destiny and purpose. We confer anointing and blessing upon their hearts and their minds, yea, their bodies, that you equip them for the hour, O God, in Jesus' name, to do your work among the nations of the world. God, vindicate the call of God, Lord. Cause, cause these to go forth in strength and power, O God, that your name be glorified. Yes, in the wonderful name of Jesus, Aaron. There was a challenge in the Old Testament regarding ministry. And God answered that by taking the rods of the leaders of the various tribes and put them into the Ark of the Covenant. And they stayed there overnight. But one man's rod budded. Shared your name, by the way. And uh, it budded this almond blossom that was a vindication. Two things. One is that it indicated a connection, life. That it wasn't just something man was doing. This is something God was doing. And that was vindicated because there was life. And this reached back. You're called of God. What God has put this into your heart is from God. But listen, this is not of yourself. You have to connect back to the connections God has given you. That's where the life is coming from. And that will be evident as you do that. As you yield your heart and your mind, as you establish those firm connections, the life is going to flow. The second thing is that it was accelerated. It was an almond blossom, the blossom and the fruit. And we are now in those days when God is going to do an accelerated work. The former and the latter rains in the same month. When you pray, claim it. Say, God, give me an accelerated work. Bring it in. Bring it in. Save. Give me disciples. Give me the wisdom far beyond myself to accelerate the work and do your work in this place. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you. We are so grateful, Lord, for your goodness. Worthy. Worthy is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, God, for this couple, God. The God, we pray, God, the Lord, your blessing, God, the Lord, would go with them and before them. God, I pray, God, fruitfulness, God, I speak of my God, sons and daughters, God, spiritual, God, the Lord, sons and daughters upon their lives, God, in their ministry, God, we believe you, God, for them. She tole bosanda, yo lobo bosicale basanda, y corre bobo sande. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother, Revelations 12, 11, uh, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Okay, a couple of things um, begin to really see God for revelation in the area of his blood and the dominion that comes with that. Once you get there, begin to plead the blood as you are sharing your testimony with these people. You're going to begin to see people respond almost uh, like automatically. And as you're doing that, believe God for them, pray for them, plead the blood and claim them as, 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 as men and women, as uh, fruit that's going to remain. Immediately begin to do that as you're, as you're praying for them in the streets. Yes, yes. Claim them. They belong to God. They're going to be fruit. They're going to be lasting fruit. Hallelujah. Father, thank you, Lord, for my brother, God, the Lord, my sister, God, use them, God. Hallelujah. She told Your name's Alvin, right? This is him's album. <laughs> your, your name means noble friend. And God's going to cause you to be a friend to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. He's going to bring an attachment of people to your life. You can be a conduit of blessing for a lot of people. I'm telling you, God's going to use you in a powerful way. This is your time. You're stepping into God's will for your life. Look for it. Expect it. And God, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's stretch, uh, stand right here. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you in oh, Jesus' the Holy name. Ghost and power. God, your God power and anointing and favor. God, inheritance, inheritance in the Lord. 
God, your touch and mercy. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. God, let there be a blessing. Hallelujah. 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 Brother, I, I, there's, a, there's a, an, an inheritance that you have. We heard about Caleb tonight. And uh, people have asked the question biblically, how come God gave Joshua an opportunity to be the leader? But Caleb, you know, he was just as faithful. But there's a story behind that. He had a son-in-law named Othniel. And Othniel was the next ruler in, in, in Israel. And so what that, what that says is that he took the blessing of, because he didn't have a son. He took the blessing of his daughter, right? And in that, in that he inherited the mantle of Caleb. And so I want you to know there's a mantle on this family. I mentioned earlier when I was, was preaching today that this couple was amazing in, in terms of their impact. Speaking of your parents, Eric and Brenda, were amazing in their impact on our lives as new converts, steady, just the, the counts, impromptu counseling sessions, whatever had to happen. And there's a blessing that's flowing. It's there. And I want you to know it's Othniel. And you take that blessing and you run with that blessing. God will bring that breakthrough. All that was been in their hearts and their prayers over the decades is going to be released in your life. Amen. You run in that blessing. Hallelujah. 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 Help me pray. Father God, right now, oh Lord, we put them in your hands. We anointing them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, move on their lives. Oh Lord, anointing them in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, bring oh your supernatural strength on them, Lord. Oh, bring your anointing, bring your understanding, Lord, over this couple. In the name of Jesus right now, we put them in your hands by the blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. Brother, let me tell you something. God told to Joshua, I will make you big in the front of the eyes of the, these people. Let me, let me explain that. God don't, is not sending to you there just to play defense. God is sending you there to go to the offense. Yes. If, you, if you set your mind in, in, in go to the defense, let me tell you something. Hell will take advantage of you. But if you set your mind that God will make me big here, not because of my pride, it's because of my humbleness. And let me tell you something. God will start to open supernatural doors for oh, you. God. But you need to set that thing in your mind. I will play offense. Yes. I will not defend myself. I will go. I will establish dominion. I want to go. And I, will, I know what I have to do. I know my discipleship. And let me tell you something. God will open. You need to be very aware that God will open supernatural doors for you. But you need to play offense. Let me pray. Father God, right now. Oh, I ask in Lord for supernatural strength. Oh, show him that you are with him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just very quickly, Jason, very quickly, uh, you have a, du a dual inheritance. Not only are you connected to the Colton congregation in a fundamental way, but you were the first baby to be dedicated in the Tucson church many, many years ago. And you went to California, not of your own decision. You just went with where you, where you were taken. But you were being brought full circle in a sense tonight. And God wants you to connect the dots. You're one of us. You are from the bosom of this congregation. Pastor Warner held you in his arms that day and prayed over you. And so you, you represent a dual inheritance. And you're going to go with an enormous momentum. And you just need to rejoice in it. Amen. Father, bless them in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we bring our brother, God, before you, God. We thank you, God, for all that he has done. We thank you for his faithfulness. We thank you for his grace, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as you have raised him up, oh God, in the name of Jesus, for such a time like this, uh, to take him, God, to that place, oh God, uh, to, to preach, oh God, your gospel. We pray, oh God, uh, that your will, oh God, be done in his life, oh God. Continue to show yourself stronger. Oh God, we give you praise. We give you glory. Anoint him for this service, Lord. In Jesus' name. Brother, I want to tell you that you have served, you have known, and you are equipped for what God has called you to do. But I want you to understand as you go, God wants me to tell you, to, to remind you that as you go, don't go in your strength. Don't go in by your ability, but he wants him to trust him for everything. Trust God for disciples. In other words, God is trying to say when you go, you have to pray your disciples into the church. Pray people to be saved. Pray people to come to your church. Pray people to become a disciple. It says as you ask, he will give it to you. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's self the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to lift up uh, the brethren that were unable to be here right now and ask God to help them. Hallelujah. So we'll begin with uh, Pedro and Maria Escolona and ask God to minister. Hallelujah. Father God, we pray right now for the grace of God over our brother and sister. God, we pray for this transition. Um, God, for what you're doing right now in Colombia. God, I pray for favor, blessing, and anointing. Um, God, we ask, oh God, that they will have, uh, God, a powerful impartation uh, from their pastors. God, let the spirit that you put upon Herman uh, rest upon uh, Pedro. Let there be grace and favor. Uh, visit, oh God, Venezuela. Open the door, oh God, uh, to that nation. Let um, every resistance, every wall fall, and let revival pour into that nation. Uh, Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Pastor Smith's going to pray for, uh, okay, well, let's pray. Now let's, Pastor Fred. Hallelujah. We'll pray for Peter. Praise God. We're going to pray for Peter and Jennifer Dorr. God is, uh, is making a very interesting move, but this couple has a tremendous history in serving the Lord. And God has given them great favor, and I believe there's a season for him in England to bring a spark and so let's pray that God's power and anointing. Father, we thank you for Peter and Jennifer, God. God, we pray, God, for their influence, God. There shall be favor. You shall open doors for them, God. You shall put your spirit behind them as they take moves, God. Give them impact. Open up a whole city, God, a people, God, to them, a favor, God. Bring a development and elevation, God, in his life and his ministry both of them a favor with those people god we thank you god for them their lives their children bless them in their new labors in jesus name amen amen let's pray for rodrigo and maria amen father we thank you so much for the willingness of this couple to go into Otavalo, Ecuador, Lord. You guide them and direct them in the way that they should go. I pray special anointing, favor, and grace. I pronounce it over their lives. Give our brother a sensitivity to where to establish the church, where to locate. Guide him, O oh God, and let him know your will. Even give him a clear-sounding word so that he knows what to do. For your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Cause your word to live in him and provide the guidance that he needs and we thank you in Jesus name yes, yes, yes. praise God amen Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, the Lord, for Steve and Edith. God, uh, we believe you, God, right now, God, the Lord, uh, Father, for fruitfulness, God. Um, we pray, God, uh, yes, God, that your hand, God, would 
go up before them, God. We believe you for signs and wonders through their ministry, God. Uh, you move, God, uh, in a supernatural way, God. Uh, Hallelujah, uh, Steve, when you get to your neighborhood, uh, wherever it is that you're going to live, immediately begin to witness to your neighbors, begin to do uh, outreaches, whatever it takes, whatever it is that you've been uh, taught to do, just begin there in your local neighborhood. Much of the fruit of your ministry, uh, the beginning stages, uh, your first fruits are going to come out right out of the area where you live. God is going to give you converts, very key converts, and uh, you're going to see miracles uh, as you're praying for them, as you're contending, you're going to see miracle converts, you're going to see healings. This is going to be spread, and people are going to begin to tell others, um, and uh, revival is going to break loose, uh, but it's going to begin right there within a, a small perimeter of where you are living. Father, thank you for this couple, God. Uh, Father, let them be fruitful, God, and blessed. Uh, she told of us. Hallelujah. Ethiopia. We're excited about Ethiopia. I've been there. I'm telling you, this is going to be a supernatural church. This is from God. A great open door God has given us. Let's pray, amen, for Israel and Deborah. Father, we thank you for Israel and Deborah. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us, God. As we have waited for this door, we have prayed for this door. And you have opened this door, God, and given us these workers. I pray your anointing would rest upon them. I pray that you would hold them in the hollow of your hand. Orchestrate his steps, oh God. Give him favor on every level. We come against every strategy of hell, every spirit spirit that would seek to hinder your will. We pray, God, for a supernatural breakthrough and outpouring, a revival to sweep that nation by the power of your spirit. Be glorified, God. We thank you and we give you praise in advance for what you're going to do. And Lord, we commit them into your care. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody shout it. Amen. And we bless you. for praying with us. We're going to ask the staff to come uh, right now. and They're going to pray for us uh, this evening. So uh, if uh, they would all come, hallelujah. One uh, thing, just let me just share a little insight into my heart that God has blessed us with for as long as I've been here is fantastic staff helpers and uh, they're all great blessings so I don't want to steal anyone's thunder but uh, I'm glad for each and every one of them hallelujah we're waiting for the star of the show to come. <laughs> My star. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray for the staff right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Ed and Julie, and we thank you, God, uh, for the treasure that they are to this congregation. We thank you for their hearts that have been tried uh, and tested over the years and even the decades, uh, and they have been found faithful, oh God. Um, yea, Lord, they have been found at their posts doing what you have called them to do with their whole hearts. Uh, God, cherishing your opportunities, uh, cherishing, oh God, the place that you have granted them, God, where they can serve the people of God. Uh, Lord, we ask your supernatural blessing upon their hearts, their minds, uh, and their bodies that you quicken them, bless them, strengthen them, God, uh, for the days to come, Lord, uh, that indeed they would fulfill every purpose that you have for their lives. Uh, let them see their heart's desire, oh God, uh, regarding ministry, Lord. Uh, let them see their heart's desire regarding impact uh, in the holy name of Jesus. Uh, amen and amen. Ed? You've been saved a lot longer than you were not saved. That matters. You understand? Because you were created by God with a destiny. So what God wants me to tell you very quickly is when you pray, 
You need to pray like a man with authority. You need to pray because you have insight. You think other people see things that things are obvious. They're not. But God has shown you things that are obvious to you. And that's regarding your ministry. It's regarding this church. It's regarding the staff. And God is saying to you, pray like a man with authority. And you're going to see God move in a special way. Father, in Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for gave God. We trust God, the Lord. Uh, Father God, the Lord, your hand that is upon him right now. God, uh, we thank you for this couple. God, the blessing that they are. My God, to this congregation, God, uh, Lord, give them, I pray, God, the Lord, fresh uh, revelation. God, the Lord, a heart, God, uh, for the youth, God. The she tore lobo sande, aleba basanda, yo lobo sondo. Hallelujah. Um, brother, I just want to say, uh, you know, God's going to begin to give you wisdom, uh, wisdom beyond your years, right? This is a, most people would take a, a lot of years and, and experience, and, but God's going to begin to deposit these things into your life, um, and you're going to begin to uh, be uh, like innovative, amen, creative, um, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and what God wants to do in the next step for these youth. God's going to begin to give you ideas and, and as you run them by your pastor, you're going to, there's going to be a witness. Sometimes, you know, you have ideas and, and, and you know, uh, they, they maybe don't go through, but God's going to begin to give you very clear, clear direction of uh, where he wants to take these youth. There's going to be just a, a special grace of, of wisdom deposited into your life. Um, and uh, God's going to do that, amen, because there are nations, there, there's states, amen, in, within our nation that God wants to uh, reach through these youth. And, uh, and you are going to disciple nations, brother, from here. That there's a heart where you want to be out there, <clears throat> you want to conquer a nation, but God says, I want to give you a hundred nations. Um, I want to uh, uh, bless you with a ministry of impartation into future nations that are being birthed right now within the youth. Amen. Father, thank you for my brother, God. Beyond that would come, Lord God. Praise God. We're going to pray for Pastor Mike, Lord. Sister Mary. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. For this uh, tremendous couple, Lord, examples of the faith, God, the stalwarts, oh God, their experience, God, and their wisdom, God, in their life, and their the uh, hearts that they have uh, touched, Lord God. We pray, God, there would be an acceleration of grace and favor, God, in this place, God, as you use their lives, God, in a totally new, God, and, and, and unique way. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you, oh God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Sister Mary, I um, just wanted to give you a confirmation that God has a very special contribution for you. There are, there are things that he has always, you know, we know you over the years, we know that you're a very competent person, but it's something that you've surrendered that to God, you've given that to him, you've said, God, I'm your servant. And so God has a place for this. God has a, things that you'll be inspired and fresh and, and favor. And women will like respond to that and say, that's, that's, that's amazing. I can do that. Be encouraged. But your example is very powerful. And God has a wonderful uh, uh, expression for you in this place at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. Oh, let's pray together. Father God, right now, oh Lord, I ask you for your supernatural wisdom and strength. Oh, my brother and my sister right now, Leonardo and Carmen, Lord, oh, that you, Lord, touch them, that you bring them, Lord, in another dimension, Lord, oh, touch them right now. Oh, shalala mayando, ralala basindo, shalala bayando, ralala basando, shalala masi. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, Leonardo, you know that um, Jonathan and his harmer bear, they were in, into the mountain and they start to kill people. But the, the key there was synchronicity. They would synchronize one to each other. And God will start to do something new. You have the heart 
of an armor bearer, but he will synchronize some things in a supernatural way. It's a new details, new things in your life that will tune you in a new, a new, new level and a new things that will start to happen in your life. And listen, that small victory create an, a domino effect. You know, and God will start to use you in a supernatural way when these little things that you will synchronize inside of you with the, in, in the rhythm of the kingdom will start to bring, you know, a lot of waves and you will see supernatural victories. God, move right now, my brother, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Touch him right now, Lord. Touch Carmen in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's all stretch our hands toward Pastor Alvin and pray for him. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this man of God. We thank you for all that you've done in his life, his spiritual birth, the day of his conversion, the day of his calling, and the unfolding of destiny in his life. Lord, I pronounce blessing from this day forward. Yea, even you shall increase the influence of his life, saith the Lord. For know this, my son, for all men have limitations, but yea, your limitations have not held you back, for from your position now you're able to wield influence to the nation, saith God. For I have put my compassion and my love in your heart for this desperate people and the multitudes of precious souls that will be around the Lamb of God in heaven that can be attributed to your life for beyond comprehension saith the Lord for the reach of your life has gone beyond what is obvious into Sierra Leone and the surrounding nations but there are others through your life as as, as uh, the Lord your God has touched uh, the Safas, and they've touched multitudes of others, and those others are touching multitudes of others. Uh, the influence of your own life has flowed generally, generationally uh, throughout the nations of Africa. And yea, from the position where you are, I will continue that work. Uh, and the greatest days of influence are in front of you, saith the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Amen. Alvin, just very quickly. Uh, God has called you to be a pioneer. You knew that from the beginning. What you haven't perhaps realized over the last decades is you've been pioneering still. Pioneers do new things, things that haven't been done before. And they don't have a clear path, but they pray and God makes a way. And you've seen that happen. The other thing is uh, you have a supernatural gifting for your calling. And you have, you have your health, you're strong, and God is going to give you the resources to go to the nations and into these churches, especially the leadership churches in every one of these nations. Uh, and as you minister there, it's not just going to be another sermon where people are going to be stirred. There's going to be a supernatural work done in those leadership churches because you went there, because you got there and deposited a spiritual gift and they will be different, and those nations will be impacted because you went there. So the Lord is saying to you, son, I've called you to be a pioneer. You have been faithful, even when you haven't had a clear path. But now you must go physically to those places, stand in those places, and declare my word, and I'm going to accelerate my work. Thank you for Garrett and Sarah. We thank you for the miracle of grace. Uh, God, I thank you for your hand over their lives. God, I pray you give uh, my brother wisdom and grace and anointing. Uh, God, I ask you, God, for a supernatural touch upon their home, their marriage, their family. God, I pray supernatural grace. Hallelujah. First thing I want to tell you, both of you, is, uh, and you know, whatever this means, but I feel like God is saying, I've healed you, but I've healed you. I've healed you. And, uh, you know, both of you have had, uh, you know, great physical challenges. You just pressed right on through, yes. both of them never wavering. Yes. And uh, I just felt God put him out to tell you both that he's healed you. Yes. 
And I thank, thank God for that. Uh, Garrett, I just want to stir you tonight. You've been a tremendous blessing to Pastor Warner. You anticipate things. You think like him. You already know things that he's going to want you to do before he even tells you to do them. There's a powerful dynamic in you. But uh, what is in my heart is that, um, uh, and I hope this comes out right, but that uh, God wants you to be uh, uh, an entrepreneur right here. Okay, you can be, you be, you're great at, at doing everything you're doing yeah. as an a, a executive officer, if I could use that term. But it, uh, he's going to stir you. He's going to stir you. Yes. And, uh, and you're taking that, that level of leadership of innovation yeah. and insight and daring and adventure. And if you get crazy, don't worry. Pastor One will let you know. <laughs> but, but, but the thing is not to be afraid of that. Yes. There's, a, there's a dimension of leadership that is critical, and that is that we are out front, and we are stepping into new things, and God is challenging and stirring, and he wants to, be, he's going to begin to stir you and impart things to you and challenges and things he's going to show you, and you have to say, you know, I'm going to venture. It's a risk to venture. I'm going to tell you right now, these men, all these men up here, these, all these guys at a conference, every one of these guys, they have to risk an adventure, mm-hmm. and they bring a whole bunch of people behind them, and, and, and he wants to give you that confidence. And you have this tremendous covering that we all have in Pastor Warner. But I believe that God's going to begin to bring you to this new dimension. And you need to be open to that. Let God help you. Father, I pray a supernatural grace over him. Jesus. Amen. We're going to stand. Let's all stand. And Pastor Warner and Mona. Hallelujah. Come right over here. Amen. Pastor Warner, you're not going to like this one bit. <laughs> and Mona. But, and you'd be the last one to take any credit. But we're here, Pastor, to honor you and Mona. 50 years. <laughs> you... You don't see yourself as unique as you are. I remember Pastor Warner was preaching in London one time, and he made a comment to my very small congregation that someone asked him a question and asked him, what do you struggle with the most? And the guy who asked him that probably thought he'd hear some lofty and and uh, spiritual fighting angels in the heavenly kind of answer, but he said, the thing that I struggle with most is my flesh. I've got to overcome just like everyone else. But oh, what consequence that overcoming has wrought around the world. Pastor Warner, you are unique. I like to think that everyone is unique, and we all are, but you've taken unique to an extreme. You are unique in terms of the fruitfulness. There's no man like you in the fellowship besides Pastor Mitchell Uh, who has had the reach of influence you have had. You planted the El Paso Church. El Paso planted San Antonio. San Antonio planted McAllen. McAllen has planted churches, and I'm not sure if any of those churches have planted churches, uh, but you could be a great, great, great spiritual grandfather. And it's your spirit, Pastor Warner, that we have... And that's what we're, we're not passing on Paul Stevens or Alvin Smith. We're passing on what you put into us. That's what we have to give to others. And so that has a generational impact five, six generations down the road. You are unique in terms of what you've been through, Pastor. And you don't like, you don't talk about it. You don't make an issue of it. And I love telling people that When we were young disciples here in the church, and I'm sure all these men would concur, we didn't see a wheelchair. We saw Jesus. We didn't see a man who was handicapped. He didn't didn't feel sorry for him. We saw Jesus, and we wanted that. We saw a man that we wanted to aspire to be like. But what you've been through, there's not another person I know of in life that's been through 
what you have been through and talk about surviving and not just surviving, flourishing, never quitting, never giving up, never getting discouraged, never losing the victory, never complaining. I always say it's so, it's very hard to be a Pastor Warner disciple and be a whiner and a complainer. We just can't, every time we think about complaining about stubbing our toe, no, 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 I can't go down that road. So you're unique, Pastor Warner, for a variety of other reasons as well. And these men standing around you and this crowd here and everyone listening online want to honor you tonight. And words like thank you, gratitude, they fall short, uh, and they don't always capture the emotional, spiritual dimension of deep gratitude that we feel. But this 50th anniversary conference, uh, it's giving glory to God absolutely above all else, and you're the first one to say that. Uh, uh, but it's also honoring you, Pastor, and we want to impart a spirit of, of blessing on you now. The best days for your life are in front of you. Your influence is going to continue to grow and express itself and manifest itself uh, to the nations of the world. So let's gather around our pastor and maybe, Richard, you could lead a prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we so thank you for Pastor Warner. God, we thank you for his life. God, we thank you for his devotion, his commitment. Uh, God, we pray. God, show him the mountain. Oh, God, I pray. Uh, God, bring him into a wide place. Oh, God, let him see all that you're done, all you're going to do. God, stir him. Oh, God, let his heart uh, burst, oh, God, with joy uh, at the revival, God, the outpouring. Uh, God, sons and daughters that are going to come from afar. Uh, God, we thank you, Lord. We pray for Mona. God, we thank you, oh, God. Uh, we thank you, God, that she has been a blessing. Uh, God, that she has been the mother of many, God, many thousands. Uh, God, I pray that the joy of the Holy Ghost uh, shall uh, fill her, Lord, powerful, uh, great grace and favor. Let her heart be encouraged uh, with authority and blessing, God. Uh, move, oh God, I pray, upon her physically, oh God. Uh, strengthen her, oh God. Uh, let her life, oh God, influence another generation of young women. Uh, Jesus name Pastor Warner um, you know uh, had a chance to fellowship with you and you're, you're writing uh, your book and uh, your memoirs and I mean this we, we talk about it and it's like any one of those chapters could be a whole book in itself of all that God is doing and this is what God spoke to me because it says all aren't all these things written in your book God's writing a book and, uh, and, uh, and your life, he has written a powerful book. And you know, the apostles said, uh, he said that you are our epi my epistles, known and read by all men. And I mean, I know you're writing a book, and we're praying that you'll get it finished. <laughs> but I'll I tell you what, Pastor Warner, look around you. Turn around, look at every one of these conference pastors that represent thousands upon thousands. You have been writing a book for the last 50 years through your life and testimony. <laughs> We, we are your epistles. We are your epistles. Uh, your life, your influence, your story lives in every single one of us. Uh, God is in a miracle. You and Mona are a miracle. You're a rare, rare uh, couple. Uh, uh, and, uh, and we don't even, even, I don't think we'll even appreciate it now for another 50 years of what God did through you. When I think about you and Pastor Mitchell, I think about R.A. Torrey and Dwight L. Moody to Charles Finney and John Wesley, George Whitfield, these people that we look up to and, and this pantheon. And all I'm saying is what God has done through you and Mona, the miracle of your life, it lives in every single one of us. Father, we thank you for our pastor, his life, his ministry. Oh God, we give you glory because you have done this uh, by your mighty power. Shana Mandi Kod I just want to say a couple of things. Pastor, uh, someone gave you a word that you are an untire of knots. And you help people through situations. But I see you as a linker of hearts, that you want us to all have one heart and to love one another. 
and to work with one another. That's his prayer. That's his conference, that we love one another. And we be brothers to one another. And we serve one another. That's, the, that's Pastor Warner's heart. And I thank God for you, Pastor. Because of you, we're standing here today. Through all that we've gone through, your prayers and your love for us, we thank God for you. Amen. Yes. No, I'm, I am wired up. Amen. Uh, no, I don't do really good, but I am ecstatic. Uh, my prayer uh, tonight, in fact, was, Lord, this is a time to advance and not retreat and not withdraw and together we can do that. I believe it with all my heart. Uh, this is the greatest fellowship uh, in the world. I don't say that, uh, in, uh, that we're perfect. We've got flaws by the gazillions, but the thing that God has done, his strength through our weakness is uh, truly wonderful. Let's value it. Let's value one another, uh, because when all said and done, uh, like they say, you're not going to uh, uh, wish you to spend more hours at work. Uh, you're going to look around at the relationships that you have forged and uh, thank God for that. Uh, we also want to conclude. I love this because it. I get to throw, not a fastball, but I get to throw a wicked curveball. <laughs> and uh, taking over as our new direct, uh, door directors, uh, uh, Abisai uh, and Alejandra Jimenez. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, some of the folks are saying, who? Well, this is the first time we've had a disciple, a couple, out of our Spanish-speaking ministry take over as door directors in the whole church. And so I think that is awesome. Thank you, sister. Uh, Beth and uh, our sisters, See, they always have the right word for me, but uh, curveball, you didn't see that coming. And God has lots more like that for all of us. So just turn and tell someone, I appreciate you, and you can be dismissed. Uh, the Lord bless you.